Hello and welcome back to the Disruptive Innovation Festival, the world's biggest online festival of ideas, where it's the end of week one. Yay. I'm, I'm sure that the lacklustre cheer there was because most of you, most of the people here, never want week one to end because there's been so much going on. And no doubt, if you've been watching some of the diff this year, especially in week one, your head is absolutely crammed full of ideas about 21st century economics, the future of design and age of automation, our three top themes in this year's Disruptive Innovation Festival. And if that's the case for you, then now is the chance to put some of that thinking to the test. And we've got just the ticket for you. In this session, we're going to be talking about the circular economy, but more specifically about circular design. And we're kicking off, as the title suggests, this year's inaugural circular design case, which is a way for you to learn about circular design and put your skills in action. And to tell us all about it, we've got two legends of the circular design world in the studio with us. It's Simon Widmer and Alex Michelou, both part of the circular design team. You, you, uh, Simon, you manage the circular design as a, as a concept. That's a big, big role. No, well, I wouldn't say I manage circular design. I mean, who can manage... Did you invent it? Who can manage <laughs> a, a, a concept like that? But... Um, um, well, I, I would say I'm very passionate about circular design, indeed, and um, yeah, it's... Uh... To, be you, to be more specific, you manage the Ellen MacArthur Foundation's uh, circular design efforts, which is, exactly. uh, which is, so is a big role. Yeah. And Alex, it just says here, intern. Is that yeah, it's unfair? Quite sad. That's a yeah, bit unfair, it's a bit isn't unfair, it? No? I mean, I don't know how, how good I do, I do my job. But, uh, well, actually, I think this cup of tea is brilliant. So, yeah, um, I very welcome, guys. <laughs> you're yeah, doing a welcome, great job. Yeah. You know, depending on the session, we might, we might talk about uh, a little promotion afterwards. Ooh, <laughs> nice. <laughs> Look at that. Yeah. I think that is actually a diff first, uh, a, <laughs> a potential promotion on air. Okay, so we're talking about circular economy and circular and circular design. I'm probably, for the purposes of this session, a bit more interested in the latter. So circular economy, people have heard about it uh, quite extensively at the Disruptive Innovation Festival so far, and we have a fantastic circular economy playlist which can guide you through the topic of circular economy over the three-week period of the 2017 diff. So if you're feeling like your circular economy knowledge is a bit rusty, then maybe the circular design, circular economy playlist is uh, somewhere you can get started. But for this session, as I say, we're going to focus on, on circular design. So let's get into that. Simon, what is circular design? Well, in, in short, it's about creating products, services and systems for the circular economy. And it's um, with a lens towards the three principles of the circular economy, which are to um, design out waste and pollution, to keep products and materials in use, and to regenerate natural systems. So those are the three principles that guide our intention when we create. Um, that's kind of circular design in a nutshell. I think one thing that's uh, really um, really unique about circular design is how it combines the user-centeredness, which we often talk about today and when we, when we look around what we create, we see... What, what is user-centeredness? I've heard it lots of times. I haven't been brave enough to ask what it actually means. Exactly. It means like when I design something for you, Joe, I, I think about your needs and, and the journey that you take with that specific product or service. So I think I put myself in your shoes and I, I, um, I practice empathy. So I, I, I think about what, are, what is the real need that I, that I address when I design. And what we do with circular design is we combine that with a systems lens or with a systems perspective. And we, we ask ourselves, how can we, how can we create such that the product that we offer to you also fits in the global um, ecosystem? So it, it fits into the, the overall system and it doesn't just end up as, as, as waste on a landfill or it doesn't just end up in, um, in, in the ocean or in a natural system. So there are lots of things that we use every day which might be uh, really um, strong on the user-centeredness. So if I was, if people have designed what it, phones or cars or um, websites or clothes to be really uh, useful for, for a person and they might take that into account. Mm. Um, I've got a lovely kettle at home. I think they, uh, they user-centeredness was high on the priority there, but probably not this circular element that yeah. might be the thing that's missing exactly i, I do i do realize uh, just going through my life and i guess i guess it's, it's similar for many of us when you 
when you see how, how things are built and, and created, they often are um, quite nice to use. I have like headphones I really love, I have a computer I really love. But then you see all these things ending up on, on landfills. And it's really sad to see that our creations, they, 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 um, they are not really designed for, for a, for a, for a, with a big, bigger system in mind. So you do see that many of the things we actually love, they do end up um, as waste and they it's are not. It's strange that, isn't it? When, so, when something like a pair of headphones or a laptop is uh, at its best, you can kind of cherish it as a user, but um, once, once it's done, it, it's, it's only destined for one place most of the time. Yes, absolutely. And I, I think that's kind of like a shift that I start to see now in many designers who, 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 are, think, who are thinking about circular design. Um, and and they, they feel that they want to do something that kind of fits in, into a larger uh, picture and something that can become another manifestation or another, not manifestation, but another, um, that can become something else afterwards. So like the question of what's next after the immediate use phase, when let's say you're, you're cattle. What happens to it afterwards? Let's let's say you, you use it for a while, but then you know is it is it being reused by somebody else? Is it being repaired if it's not uh, working anymore? Uh, is it being recycled, or, or does it just end up somewhere in a bin and then in a landfill, um, or even worse in a natural system? Yeah. Mm. And yeah, to to build upon this, like what we usually say is that we don't design um, for users only anymore, but also for the systems they're part of and the other stakeholders in the system. And um, yeah, based based on what you say before, also like we've. Since um, we started this initiative uh, a few a few months ago, we've seen so much momentum around it. Um, I mean, on a daily basis, we see many more designers coming up with great ideas. We hear many more conferences uh, talking about the concept. So I, I think it's it's um, it's it's the start of a journey, and, and it's only going to get bigger. Yeah. So there's real momentum around circular design, and th just as a reminder, this session will be kicking off the first ever circular design case, and we're going to come on to that. Uh, towards the second half of the session, but we've got the the definition of circular design roughly. We're getting to grips with it, but one thing that I find really useful, um, and I'm uh, hopefully I'm not alone in this, is when trying to learn about a new concept like circular design, is to see some examples of it in action. Um, and I believe if you guys have actually done your homework, that you've brought along a few examples for us today. So uh, these these sheepish. Yeah. Cheapest grins, I hope, are merely in jest because we've got stuff to talk about. <laughs> so first up, you have, what? talk us through, let's see if we can get our, ah, Whoa, talk us through this one. We've got a little shoe or boot on the screen. It's beautiful, isn't it? It's beautiful, um, yeah. So it, it, this is called shoey shoes. So um, at first sight, is it, it, it is a kid shoe that is made out of leather, but it's not any shoe and it's not any leather. So actually all... Um, the leather that's been used to produce these shoes is actually leather offcuts from the fashion industry. So all the leather pieces you can see around, around there that usually go straight to the landfill. So here what the designer and entrepreneur does is that it diverts this um, waste stream away from the landfill to actually use it to build new products. And the other really interesting thing about this is that these shoes are engineered to be disassembled, to be reused and recycled over and over again. So when you think of a kid, they grow their feet very, very quickly. So what you usually end up, you buy a kid, you buy a shoe, you buy a kid, you buy a shoe. <laughs> Some people do buy a kid. Yeah, it's very sad though. Uh, you, you actually end up buying, your, you buy your shoe and then the kid grows and then you actually have to throw it away or give it to a brother or sister. But in this case, you actually have a service model um, through which you can actually give the shoe back to the manufacturer and, and therefore you actually keep these resources and materials in use, which is one of the principles of the circular economy. So this is really exciting. Yeah. In fact, people watching online, if they've been following the diff on Twitter and on Facebook, there's a short video of this, um, just sort of 30 yeah. second clip about um, Thomas Leach, the designer behind, uh, behind this. So it uses, just so it's super clear for our, for our viewers, what is it that's circular about this? Simon, to go back to your, your three um, principles mm. at the start, which were mm. about regenerating natural systems, designing out waste and pollution, yep. and keeping products and materials in use. Which of those boxes does this one tick? Yeah. So as we can already see, and as Alex has mentioned, it, it's um, clearly strong on designing out waste, because that has been waste before. And now it's, it's part of a new product that creates a lot of value. Um, it is also about... Um, uh, keeping materials in use, like very clearly we have here the leather that's you know not going to landfill but being used again. Um, 
I think also that the elements or the the components are um, are to some degree um, well they're certainly like also in line with principle three so they don't um, destroy natural mm. systems in that case it doesn't really pollute anything so and is it that if you were designing something for a circular economy that it would have to tick all three boxes straight out the gate or can you is it something that you could kind of build up over time yeah i think it's 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 part of the philosophy of design thinking that you iterate so i think it's it's um, and also that's one of the the guiding thoughts for for today's session you can start small you can get started very very easily you can then iteratively improve so it's not that you have to um, sit um, on your desk for hours and, and think about like you know the perfect solution right away for all three principles and like and, and, and embedding technologies and using materials and you can start um, step by step and, and iterate and, and prototype. Okay, so that's um, that's example number one. Shoey shoes, I like it. We're going on to number now. Ah, what's this? This looks like uh, it might have some noodles in it or something like that. What have we got? Yeah, well, that might actually be a new application for them. <laughs> I have to I have to tell John. <laughs> um, uh, at the moment, it's um, this is called a Trio Cup, and um, Trio Cup is an alternative to your um, disposable single-use uh, cup that you get in in the coffee chains, for example. Um, so as you can see, it's all made from one piece, uh, and that's quite unique because currently you have the lid that you put on your uh, disposable cup, um, which is made of polystyrene, and uh, so hundred. Yeah, hundreds of uh, thousands of tons are, are being um, um, diverted to landfill or, or even fly away because mm. they're quite small and so on. Um, so with this redesign, they, they have used origami uh, te uh, technique. Or so it's, it's really a creative use of, of, um, of, um, of uh, ancient, well, I guess, technology. Mm. Um, and um, what I really love about it is it's not only circular in the sense that it uses 100% compostable materials and it's... Uh, designing out the small pieces that would leak. Uh, it's also a great way of uh, improving the user experience because as you, well, we don't have one here uh, because we use uh, reusable mugs, but, <laughs> <laughs> but um, uh, if, you, if you go to, to a coffee chain uh, you, and, and you have your hot coffee and you walk into the office and you have like important documents and, or maybe post-its on, on your desk. You've got quite a few post-its on your desk. Yeah, but I wouldn't say they're important, but like there are, <laughs> there are enough of them and you drop your your coffee mug um, cup it would actually spill. So those lids are rubbish anyway. Yeah, yeah. They don't they, anymore. They, they fall the... off and they tip the coffee down. You know, I get yeah. the right state. So this is super interesting because it's like, it looks really simple, right? You have one piece of, of, of carton of paper, and actually in the way it's folded in the design of this origami, it's it's actually like anti spillover. Um, and yeah, like you can actually like Simon said, just improve the user experience while at the same time diverting all this waste from, from landfills and from the environment. Amazingly simple, isn't it? Yeah. And you, uh, so this is made of, made of one material, that's kind of the circular thing here, that it, rather than having different bits of material that separate or are more difficult to um, process, this is one compostable material that makes it easier for the, for the, for the customer um, and, and is, is better use of resources. Exactly. So, like, one of the elements is that the material use, but also then the fact that it's designed in a in a way that there is no more detachable pieces, right? So it's not only about what you use, but also like how likely is it going to leak? Mm. And, and at the moment, when you go to beaches, for example, uh, natural systems, you find um, small items that are leaking into the natural system, and that was is designed out here. And people might have seen this before. Was it? It was part of an innovation another innovation challenge. Can you tell us a few moments about that? Exactly. So what we have seen since uh, we spoke last year here is um, there has been a lot of uh, um, uh, effort and, and one of the major initiatives was the Circular Design Challenge. So it was a one million dollar prize by IDEO and, and, the, and the foundation. And six winners have, um, have, well, there have been a lot of amazing ideas, but um, there have been uh, six winners of their prize and, and um, uh, maybe we can invite our, our listeners as well to, to check them out. Uh, there's some really amazing videos and, 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 um, and pictures of their, um, of their ideas. And, and all of them have applied something else. Like some of them have reinvented business models. Some of them have uh, chosen different materials. Um, there is also like, um, well, we'll see one more that Alex will talk about. Sure, in a let's, let's go on to our, our third and, and, well, final for this little discussion, but there are many more. But our third uh, example 
of, uh, of circular design in action. Alex, tell us about this. Yeah, so it's another um, New Plastics Economy Innovation Prize winner. And what you see here is actually a totally edible and compostable uh, sachet in which you can put any liquid. Um, so basically these liquids would come in plastic sachet and what like Simon kind of mentioned, um, the smaller the plastic packaging, the harder it, it is to actually um, like capture it and therefore the easiest it, it is to, to leak into the environment. So here the people actually, the designers totally design out the need for plastic by, um, by making a, the sachet made out of seaweed. So you can actually eat this sachet if you want. Wow. Uh, you, or you can compost it within six weeks, so it will actually. So just, this uh, could hold some uh, some ketchup or something like that, maybe. Yeah, ketchup, mayo. You just put it on your vinegar for your chips. fish and chips. Yeah, exactly. And yeah. then and then you could just eat it. Yeah. 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 And what's really interesting is, um, I mean, for all the ideas we saw here, um, is there's a um, a bigger business model behind. And and for example, in in in, in the case of uh, in the case of these guys. They, they realize that uh, for these sachets, they have very poor barrier, barrier properties. So that if you like compress them uh, a bit too strongly, then they will just leak. Mm. So for example, you cannot sell that kind of sachet in supermarkets. No. So what they do is that they want to partner with restaurants and other hospitality services so that you actually produce this sachet as close as possible to the consumer. Mm. So you, you always need to think about all these, these aspects uh, when you actually come up with such solutions. Sure. Th these guys actually, um uh, what in a diff session a couple of days ago mm. um, on food packaging, um, yeah. I think on Wednesday afternoon. If uh, the viewers <coughs> at home want to catch up on that one, uh, was with Cup Club, um, uh, Skipping Skipping Rocks Lab, yeah. and yeah, exactly. uh, and someone making bamboo packaging as well. So um, not so, their yeah. first appearance at the diff. I'm pleased to say. So three three examples there of the uh, of, of circular design in action, and. Hopefully that's got people a bit fired up, a bit inspired about how they could maybe start to redesign Ooh. everyday things. And le so let's talk about the circular design case because that's, that's a way to, uh, <coughs> to, to actually get started. Alex, why don't you tell us sure. a bit about um, it? I mean, obviously when you see such, such projects here, people have spent months uh, doing research, prototyping, user testing. But I do believe that all of these designers, entrepreneurs, what they did in the beginning is that they had these circular economy mindsets and circular design principles into, into their, their heads. And they w were looking for everyday um, products and everyday experiences they could actually make better and design for the circular economy. So it's exactly what we're here for today. We want people to choose everyday products uh, and actually think of redesigning the systems around them. Um, and as you mentioned, it's just about starting small. So we have a 10-day uh, competition for which we actually um, also, it, it's also actually a learning journey. So what we put together, and we might maybe show it on the screen, is that we pulled many resources um, from the Circular Design Guide, um, about which Simon is going to talk afterwards, mm -hmm. and, and other thought leaders uh, in systems thinking, such as OnSchool. And, and we've put this document together um, to give you information on, on the submission process, what you actually need to submit, where you need to submit it. And um, so we actually invite here um, people who don't know at all about circle design, but also people who know a lot about it and just put your skills to the test. So this is, uh, this is you taking a look at the exactly, yeah. circular design. This is the learning journey. So um, you'll have all the information you need out there is going to be available uh, below this video afterwards. Mm -hmm. um, so you have more the technical information about how does the competition works. And then afterwards you have um, uh, about 20 pages on on material that you can actually um, have a look through and that will tell you a bit more about what circular design really is. Um, and I do think we might have some, some content uh, to, to show here. Uh, sure, yeah, yeah. So, but so just to clarify, the circular design case, you can, uh, you can, could you just do the learning journey by itself because you want to learn a bit more? And then if at the end of it you feel uh, like you want to, as we said at the start, mm -hmm. put that to the test, you could then enter the, the, this, this challenge. Um, yeah. Or do you have to do both? How, do, how does that work? No, um, so for people who already know um, quite a bit about circle design, they, they wouldn't maybe have to go through the learning journey. Although we here we, we put some very interesting resources from, from also our partners. Um, but yeah, like for people who, who don't know about the topic, that would be a good way to start to actually have a look through this document, watch a few videos, um, and then take part in, in the competition, actually. And, yeah. and before we um, watch a, a little clip from that, uh, where can they get the learning journey? Where can people download it? So below this, uh, on this session yeah. page, below the video, you have all the important information okay. you need. 
and you also have a yeah, link to the learning journey document. Fantastic. All right. So uh, let's take a look now at a clip, a uh, piece of the content that you'll find in the, in the circular design case learning journey. Design thinking in the linear world you, uh, has, uh, it, 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 it not surprisingly kind of lives in that linear process. So design happens to be, tends to be front loaded. It happens at the beginning and you kind of design the thing and you send it off into the world and you're done. But in the circular world, design's kind of never done, right? You're always thinking about how do we take these resources? Maybe, there's, maybe it's products that already exist. Maybe it's the materials you're bringing back. Maybe in a sort of a digital service world, it's the fact that the service is constantly evolving. But the role of design throughout the cycle of, um, of these products and services um, remains, remains relevant. And so uh, the role of the designer can, can come in almost at any point in the, in, in, in the cycle. And so this idea that design's never done is going to be an important concept, I think, of design thinking for, uh, for the circular economy. At the beginning, we're going to find it very difficult to do this stuff because we're having to rethink and retrain ourselves. But just like hap what happened with computers, when new generations of designers who grew up with computers were very much more fluid with the tools than, we, than those of us who had to learn kind of once we were already trained, the same thing is going to happen with circular design, I think. We'll start to see generations of designers um, uh, very soon, I think, who are, who are intuitive about this uh, kind of this idea of circularity and thinking about the various principles and, and elements of circularity and bringing them to their work in a, in a very natural way because they'll have grown up with it and, and been trained for it. So that's what we need to look for. Tim Brown there speaking about circular design as part of the circular design case learning journey. If you're just joining us, my name's Joe. I'm here with Alex and Simon uh, from the Circular Design team at the Ellen MacArthur Foundation, and we're kicking off the Circular Design case, a 10-day challenge for you to learn uh, and explore and then put your skills to the test in circular design. So that was Tim Brown. He's the CEO of IDEO, a bit of an iconic mm. uh, design designer. He's into circular design. He's a fan. Is that right? I, I think Tim has been one of the visionary uh, designers uh, all the way, and he he, he wrote also the, uh, the the great book on uh, change by design. And uh, from yeah, from our work over the last year and actually before as well, um, yeah, you can tell that he's really passionate about the circular economy and and designing, um, redesigning things for for the circular economy. So yeah, um, has been really inspiring to, to see Tim uh, and, and his words. Yeah. Certainly a great advocate of the, uh, of, of, of the concept. So we're talking about a challenge. Sometimes challenges, getting your hands dirty, rolling up your sleeves, it can seem a bit daunting, especially if, if you've only got 10 days to, to do it. What other resources are out there to help uh, help people get started. We've got the, the, the learning journey. Mm. But you've also sneakily mentioned the circular design guide a couple of times. It, tell us a bit about that and how that could help people as they get started with the design case. Right. Yeah, so many of the resources are building on the circular design guide. And the guide is basically a practical tool that helps you as a designer um, or also as a learner. Uh, it, it shows why circular uh, economy matters in design. It gives you tools, so methods. We have 24 methods across the different stages of the design uh, process. Um, we have resources and links to other um, uh, resor um, to other uh, partners, as Alex mentioned. Um, and we do have um, an explanation of what mindsets you can apply to to circular design. There's also uh, one thing that, which might be more interactive than the guide itself, which is the LinkedIn community. So you can join. Uh, a community of 8,000 people sharing ideas and exchanging and, and answering questions. So that might also be... Specifically on, on circular design. Exactly, yeah. And how do people find that, uh, that community? 8,000 people, that sounds right. pretty vibrant. Yeah, yeah. Um, so you can go on the circular design guide uh, first and then click on the, on the bottom left, join LinkedIn group, or you can just go on LinkedIn and, and search for circular design guide. Um, okay, you find it's also group. part of the learning journey. Okay, and it's already well. okay, yeah. okay. So uh, you've got the, the circular design guy, which can help with the circular design case. I think yeah. something that, you, there's some cash on the, available, isn't there? If, if people, are, yeah, if people yeah, yeah. Are, are listening to this and see it, thinking, well, maybe I could get involved, but it seems like a bit of work. I've got that big bit of, that big project at work to do. 
there is some money available. Why, why would people want to enter? I mean, um, for sure, so you have a price. Um, the top three entries will get what we call the Circle Design Case Award. So we do think it's a great way to build um, professional credentials, especially for students. Um, it's going to be provided by Eleanor Carter Foundation, also Chris Grantham from IDEO and, and Josie Warden from the Royal Society of Arts. And the top entry will eventually um, receive an additional thousand pounds. Okay, yeah. so it's uh, kind of cash prize, um, but three almost like certifications almost to a bit of something you can stick on your CV. Mm -hmm, exactly, yeah. And yeah. then even if you don't uh, make that shortlist, then it's a great learning experience yeah. for, for an individual. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so um, I think we're, we're, we're kind of getting our head around circular design and, and circular design case. L a last little logistical question for me, who can take part in it? Is it just for um, people working in a design studio or um, what, what, are the, what are the criteria there? I, I think it's for, um, like Simon mentioned, circular design is about creation. So everyone who feels um, to be a creator can actually take part in it. And I would encourage everybody to actually take part in it. Um, whether you're an engineer, whether you're a business person and you're a business model innovator, we, all, we need all these people actually to, to take circular design to the next level. So for sure we do target uh, a lot of design students, product designers, fashion designers, um, but actually everyone, in the way this competition has been designed, everyone can, can take part in it. It's, uh, yeah. yeah, and I think, I think also like one element that's really um, key to this uh, mm -hmm. design challenge is is um, assuming a systems view, right? So it's a lot about um, understanding uh, how your, uh, your thing that you're doing um, relates to the other parts of a system. And I think that, that insight and that understanding is really important in today's world of, of interconnected, um, interconnectedness. And mm -hmm. I think it will, it's not, it's not really um, only targeted at designers with uh, design in, in a product, uh, in a job title. Um, but more at people who want to understand like how we can create something that doesn't just um, um, uh, well that doesn't end up somewhere isolated, but that's really connected and that is, uh, that's more resilient in a way. Okay. So I was quite pleased to hear that anyone can take part because I've actually had a go myself. I've oh my I God. thought I'm going to be sat down with these guys for for, for half an hour, forty minutes. It's a perfect chance for me to test some of my ideas out for the circular design case. So is it okay if I run a few of those, few of those by you now? I'm really curious to see, yeah. Okay, so yeah. Uh, that's, that's uh, that, Delta that's from yours? before. That's not mine. Really? Um, I wish that was mine. Yeah. So what, what I did was I thought, what, it's, 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 the design case focuses, I'm not sure if you mentioned this already, around plastics. Yeah, yeah, I can, I can say it again. So basically people will have to, to take an everyday product that is made out of plastics or plastic-based fibers, okay. such as polyester. So you could pick a plastic bottle, a plastic cup, a t-shirt if you have polyester in it, or the carpet in your flat. All right, so I, I chose a plastic bottle. Oh, um, So I'm on the right track already. So my first idea, I've tried to rethink uh, what we could do with plastic bottles using my best circular design efforts. That's my first one. Um, what do you okay. think of this? You, we take plastic bottles and we can use them as a sort of decorative uh, vase. I could put some flowers in there maybe, it's lovely flower. make my home look pretty around the office. We could even have one here in the, in the studio if you like. What, what do you think? Am I on the right track there? Be honest well, with I me, mean, I can take uh, you know, like I, I, um, Well, uh, Jeremy, it's, it's great to see that you, you have like, you know, a, an affinity for flowers and, and that, you, that you appreciate uh, art in, in, your, mm -hmm. in your flat. Um, um, I, I think there is a, there is a, a trace of like, making something, um, um, giving it a second life maybe, but then the question would be where does you know, your product go afterwards? Like after being um, a bottle for a flower, is there any, any other step or is it just like, stuck there? And also the question of like, how many um, bottles for flowers do we really need? Is it the, the, is the best use of those resources more, yeah. that, that come from like, far away? And, like, and it, yeah. I so, might maybe only use one or two. Personally. So, so either you need cool. to have more flowers or you need to rethink a little bit like... Oh, okay, yeah. all right, all right. Uh, idea number two. Now, and I heard... Now, this I heard about a type of insect that can eat plastic. Uh, and so I've tried to draw that there. He's just having a bite out of the plastic. What do you think about that? What about if we just fed all our plastic bottles to these yeah. uh, little maggots? I mean, in a way, I mean, you kind of like give back the 
plastic bottle to the biosphere again, but um, the question is what happens to these worms afterwards? Um, is there any substances of concern on this bottle, on the etiquette? Uh, is there any chemicals that these worms cannot digest? Uh, you, can, you should think about this. I haven't and, actually yeah. investigated what you happens to the should, worms. Maybe try it, maybe you, you, you get a few worms. <laughs> okay, all right. I'm already getting a bit more into the system because I hadn't thought about what happens to the worms next. Yeah, and also, like, I mean, one, one thing to look at is, like, can you, can you, keep, um, can you uh, keep your things in the inner loops? So we often talk about inner loops, and inner loops means uh, can you uh, keep this at a higher um, um, uh, value, uh, so highest uh, possible... Um, um, utility and and reuse of course like keeps the whole bottle uh, intact um, and recycling or composting then is already like one loop that's more out and it requires more energy more labor to bring it back again mm. so what it means like if this even if it safely uh, returns to the biosphere you would have to recreate the next bottle right so you would have to put in the energy the effort again um, so the question is a bit like, do you really want to get that, that much out of the... Uh, okay, yeah. all right, I'm with you. All right. Idea number three. Uh, this is me wearing my new T-shirt, which is made completely out of, out of plastic bottles. Again, I'm a bit, I'll level with you. I, I stole this idea because I heard about someone doing it online. Right. So clothes made out of, out of my, my old plastic bottles. Well, um, I think yeah, you can have some polyester in your in your t-shirt but uh, if it's um, you should think of what other materials you're gonna mix that up with um, because at the end of the day when you don't want your t-shirt anymore what's what will happen to it is there a way for you to return it back to the producer or when this this t-shirt has actually a few materials like how can you really like take these materials apart afterwards so if they're all mixed up kind of fused together yeah, like um, cotton, and a... cotton, polyester. Like, how would you then, after that T-shirt, right? So you, you put your uh, bottle into a T-shirt. What happens afterwards, right? So, like, would, how would it then um, get collected again? And as we know, today, recycling rates for, for T-shirts, for example, are really low. Okay. Um, so you will, you will see that very soon in, the, in our Fibers report, oh, 28th of November. Oh, peak. <laughs> All right, um, so T-shirt maybe I'm 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 get, maybe getting a bit closer, but I'm still not quite there. My last idea, and uh, was that if we're talking about a water bottle, we don't actually want the water bot the bottle at all. We just mm. want the water. Mm. We don't yep. want once a, a bottle. So my last idea was just a tap. What if? We could just get water from anywhere. Most, I mean, in Britain, we mm. have pretty safe drinking water everywhere. But if I'm in the office, unless I'm in the office or I'm at home, I f that's that. Those are the times I feel I need mm. to buy some water so it's uh, so, so I can so I can drink it. But what about if I could go anywhere? If I could go into a shop or a pub and just say, "Oh, can you top up my bottle?" Mm. What if is that, that? I think now. I think this is a cultural change. What do you think? Yeah, that's pretty strong. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, th that's that's going back to what we started with, right? Really understanding the need. So really thinking in terms of like, what do we really want to address here, and um, and redesigning the not only the physical product but also the as you say the interaction and and the whole system. And I think that's a really interesting way of of taking a step back and zooming out of the system and understanding what um, what you really want to meet, which need. Yeah. Okay, so those are a few of my my. Um, a mixture of my slightly less serious and slightly more serious ideas for the circular design case, which has been the topic of our session uh, here today at the DIFF. But Alex, you've actually got a real example of the sort of thing mm -hmm. you're hoping that people will be able to put together and submit during this 10 day challenge. Part of our set has just fallen down. It's designed Sorry. completely for disassembly um, <laughs> and that's on display now. We'll fix that in a minute. Alex. Talk us through cool. this. This is more what you're thinking. Exactly. So, um, as I mentioned, people will have to take an everyday object made out of plastic or plastic-based fibers. So, in this case, you won't be able to take an apple pie, unfortunately, even though That's you a shame. maybe like it. Um, but we, we decided to, to provide this uh, as an example since it's very um, easy to understand. We all have eaten apple pies. And when you think of an apple pie, you can think it in a very easy way. You put some sugar, flour, eggs and apples in there. Um, you have somebody that bakes it and then you eat it. But when you start really thinking about the system, you can think of, all right, I'm, I'm, I'm going to make my, my pie in my kitchen, so what about my oven? How is my oven powered? Where does this energy come from? Oh, you so you've see. got the oven in the top left there. For example, yeah. Or um, 
what about the ingredients for my, for my apple pie? Do they come from a local farmer? Do they come from a supermarket? Where do they, are they locally sourced? Do they come in any packaging? So actually, by, that's what people will have to do in this challenge. They will have to take this everyday product that they can put in the middle of, of the page and actually start to really understand the system that's around. Because that, we do think that's the, one of the most important things if you want to start with, within circular design. You need to take a step back and, as Simon mentioned, zoom out to understand the broader, uh, the broader picture, actually. And mm. once you've done that, as you can see here with the purple uh, bubbles, um, you can start finding what we call circular opportunities. So these are opportunities in, in which you could dig out to actually make the whole system and your product more circular. So just to clarify, this, this is a map of maybe the system as it is. Yeah. Um, but it's useful because often we, as you said, we don't, we don't think of the whole system. We just think of our own little part of it, making an apple pie out of some yeah, sugar yeah, and some yeah. apples. But this is a map of the whole system and we need to do that before we can start to find what the circular opportunities are. I think it's really important. And, and I read what um, was Thomas, Le Thomas Leach said uh, about Shui Shoes. He's, like he did map out physically the, the, the leather industry and it helped him a lot to just understand how where does the power lie, who controls what, where do, which materials flows, uh, where, um, so you can actually start to see maybe, okay, which are the biggest waste streams. Um, and, and then, as I mentioned, you, get, you can start, um, you, you will um, have to find three, up to three opportunities to make this thing more circular. Um, so, for example, in this case, um, you could look at your oven and, and say, all right, it's maybe getting really old. Uh, what will I do when actually I cannot use it anymore? Can, is there a way for me to send it to the appliance store? Um, so you'll, you'll actually map these this three opportunities and then you'll actually move to the, to the second part of the, of, of the, of the competition, which is uh, you'll actually frame your own design challenge. Do, are we going to see that now? Yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Ah, here we so go. So this is the second part of the, of the challenge. And, and as I guess Albert Einstein said, uh, if I had 60 minutes to resolve a problem, I would actually spend 55 uh, asking the right question. So I do, th we actually, actually, I think we think that too many people um, actually try to find solutions before asking the right questions. So based on your analysis that you would have done on your everyday products, we want you to pick the one question that you think is critical to ask to make your everyday product more circular. In our case here, we, we picked how much we source ingredients for our apple pie locally while regenerating the soil they are grown in. And you can see this question actually as your own uh, design challenge that you could maybe take on and solve after the case. And this really drives home that the circular design case is a starting point, isn't it? We're not asking people to prototype something or, 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 or send us a, um, a CAD drawing or something like that. We're saying, Use, use your noggin, uh, put together a, a map of an everyday product, and then just narrow it down to one question that you, you're asking. And that might be, maybe it won't come to anything, but maybe that's the start of a, mm. of a circular design journey, the same that we exactly, saw yeah. our innovators go on at the start of this session. And yeah. as Simon mentioned the circular design guide before, um, once you've participated in the case and you, and you end up with a question you do feel really passionate about, you could actually then jump into the guide and, and having these more in-depth resources to help you actually build a real business case around, around this uh, idea you have. Yeah. Right. <clears throat> what I also like about it is like there, there have been uh, three stages or like three different levels of stakeholders. So it's a very uh, modular, iterative approach. So as, as, uh, as we have mentioned before quickly, um, not only can everybody uh, participate here and, and learn about systems thinking, but also uh, it can be quite low effort. I, th I think in, a, in an evening, uh, two, three hours, you can actually take a paper, map, and you can already... My ideas actually took about five minutes, if you can believe that. See, it's, it's, it's amazing. Really it's, uh, it's well, really you're also a bit of a star, I have to admit. So. <laughs> but, um, Real drawing skills. But it is something that, as you say, you could, you could, do, you could do in an evening. Yeah, 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 absolutely. And, and here it's been um, done on a design software, but you can actually do it by hand. And you'll find all the information on the submission requirements um, on the learning journey document and also below this video afterwards. Great. Okay, let's just uh, do a final recap. So we've got a uh, circular design case. We're looking for two submission uh, elements, mm -hmm. the system map, and then your one question for systems change. Um, all the information will be found at thinkdiff.co. Yep. Circular Design Guide is the kind of corresponding uh, resource that people can use as well as the learning journey. Um, and 
And then how do people share the actual, mm -hmm. their submissions? Do they send them to you or how do they get them out there? So they have to send them um, on Twitter, um, hashtag circle design case and hashtag think diff. So this also will be written and you'll find all the information. Um, and you need to submit um, your entry before um, Sunday the 19th of November um, at midnight. Um, and then we'll have a look through all the, the submissions and, and we'll um, actually judge which ones are, are the best and can actually win the And what are you award. taking into account when you judge? What are the cri criteria? Yeah, there are a few, there are a few criteria. Um, a few I can mention is, um, for example, your system map, how, how clear it is, how can we really grasp uh, the information um, well, um, did you really consider the most important stakeholders, the connections between them? Um, another criteria we put forward is, um, is to have traction on Twitter. So it's not about public voting, but it's more, we do think that for circle design, it's, we need more designers and more people who have this mindset to engage others. So that's why we, we want to, we try to replicate into this uh, criteria. The, all, all six criteria are on the, on the journey, so Fantastic. you can find it on one slide, it's all, all quickly summarised. Yeah. Okay, well, thank you so much for joining me in the Diff Studio today, telling us all, all about circular design, about the circular design case, and reviewing some of my not-so-good uh, circular on. design ideas. Maybe I'll have to improve those a little bit. For those of you who have been watching along at home, thanks for joining us here at this Diff 2017 session. You've heard all about circular design and the circular design case, which is an accessible way to start your own circular design journey. And to take you out, we've got a short film uh, on the circular design case for you to enjoy. Thanks for joining us and we'll see you in week two at the diff. What if we could redesign everything for the circular economy? I feel better as a designer, I feel better as a member of society if I'm creating things and I'm using things that are that, that, that I can do as much of that as I like and it's not going to be bad for the planet. In fact, it's going to be good for the planet. The next big thing in design is circular. A moment when many, many more designers can, can kind of embark on that journey of learning and, and embark on that, on that journey of change and just uh, get started. Start your own circular design journey. Join us at the Disruptive Innovation Festival and get a chance to win the first Circular Design Case Award. Register here.